Nationwide Football League Extra in association with the Nationwide Building Society. Coming up, the inside story on Division 1. Bolton hit the panic button. Barnsley make a serious case for promotion. The enemy within. We examine football's drug culture and how clubs are trying to kick the habits. And from Sausage Factory to the south of France, from White Hart Lane to West Yorkshire, we're up close and personal with Chris Waddle. Well, he's 36 years old next week, but Chris Waddle is now vital to Bradford's chances of staying in Division One, partly because he's used to the sort of big match atmosphere that confronted Bradford at Main Road this weekend. Well, more on Waddle coming up after all the other goals from Division One. By their own high standards, Bolton Wanderers are struggling, especially away from home. Goal scoring isn't the problem. Bolton possess so many with an eye for goal, and Danish international midfielder Per Fransen is among them. Bolton's big problems are in defence. They've conceded more goals than any other side in the top nine, and that's with the same back four that played against Premier League strikers last season. Yet Paul Pesky Solido's equaliser a minute into the second half appeared to be just a minor setback. Defender Chris Fairclough was the latest beneficiary as a Bolton corner. And the leaders were dictating the game. Until goalkeeper Keith Brannigan blew his top with 10 minutes remaining. Brannigan comfortably collected a corner, but then for some reason, he barged Pesky Salido to the ground. Right in front of the referee, and Kevin Lynch immediately awarded a penalty. The Bolton manager, Colin Todd, was livid, not at the referee, but Brannigan for unprofessional conduct. The goalkeeper couldn't redeem himself by saving Bob Taylor's kick. 2-2, and that's Bolton's fifth league draw running. Bolton's lead was seven points. Two wins in a week for Sheffield United have cut it down to three. United have been steady, not spectacular, but they rarely lose a lead. And Peter Cachuro's ninth of the season was enough to beat Portsmouth. This time last season, Barnsley's promotion look began to fade badly. But 12 months ago, they didn't have one of the most experienced double acts in the country. Paul Wilkinson and John Hendry. Hendry's exquisite chip provided the something extra Barnsley had needed to break down Southend United. 1-0 with just 18 minutes to go, became 3-0 by the finish, as Barnsley exploited the new space in and around the South End penalty area. Wilkinson volleyed in his seventh of the season. Two years ago, Wilkinson and Hendry were the key men in the Middlesbrough side promoted under Brian Robson. It's that sort of experience every challenging side needs. A minute from time, Wilkinson's second made it three. Crystal Palace have dropped to fourth. Sloppy defending has been their undoing, according to manager Dave Bassett. Joining him as Palace's most frustrated man on Saturday was striker Bruce Dyer, one of the few players maintaining his form. Dyer scores, then hit the post, but then saw Oxford capitalise on that ponderous marking that's giving Dave Bassett headaches. And when goalkeeper Chris Day hesitated from the deep cross, Nigel Jensen was always favourite to score. Ten minutes from the end, Dyer's power and body strength helped him spin away from defender Phil Gilchrist. His shot from the edge of the area should have won Palace their first match in four. But five minutes later, Oxford substitute Stuart Massey exploited the wide open space and ball watching to win Oxford a dramatic but deserved points. All teams have a little blip, uh, blip at this time. Of, well, sometimes at this time of the year, Norwich and Bolton actually haven't won games who are up the top like ourselves. So I think all teams have spells when perhaps they don't get the results they want. But uh, overall, I've got to say, in the last three games, we could have quite easily have won the games. It's not that we played badly. It's just that uh, we've shot ourselves in the foot on one or two occasions. Away from Molyneux, Wolves expect to win every game. So this was something of an anti-climax. But for manager Mark McGee, it was a point gained. Both goalkeepers were underworked, but Ipswich made what real chances there were 
striker James Scowcroft went closest. Tranmere Rovers were another of the top six to struggle. At the Victoria ground, the commentator is Clive Tildesley. Wallace. Space now for Steen. McMahon going on beyond him. Kavanagh. McMahon. Sheeran. Yes. 26 minutes gone, and another from the winter collection of Mike Sheeran. Beautifully found. The control was excellent. The finish wasn't perhaps the most assured that he's produced this season, and that's his 16th goal, but Eric Nixon was wrong-footed, and Stoke City are in front. Aldridge turned on towards Nevin. Sigurdsson is the man who's in the way again, and Steen has found Sheeran, and here comes Stoke on the break. Four against four here momentarily. Mike Sheeran. Got to go all the way himself if he can. Poke back to O'Brien. By O'Brien to Nixon, who, my goodness me. Well, he tried to stop it to clear it, and it just flipped over his foot, and just the right side of the post from the goalkeeper's point of view. Sheeran. Nice spin by Sheeran. He's going to go alone here. Eric Nixon racing outside of his penalty area. Sheeran's charged it down. Now can he finish it off? He has seen his support. Oh, put it to his own goal by Dave Higgins. And with eight minutes left to play, Stoke City have doubled their money and surely secured their second win of the week. Full marks to Sheeran, firstly for his ability to turn, then the purpose, which is such a feature of his play. Then a little bit of persistence to charge down. Nixon's attempted clearance, and they had a little bit of luck to see his effort helped into the goal by poor Dave Higgins. It's 2-0. Norwich City's slide continues. Now manager Mike Walker says he'll have to make changes, or relegation could be a possibility. Andy Payton was Huddersfield's match winner with two clinically taken goals from two assists by Lee Makel. Back in the side after injury, and that's a major boost to Huddersfield. Payton ran through to confirm only their second victory in the last 14 games. For the second time in five days, Birmingham City had to settle for a goalless draw. Here's Peter Brackley.